What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Nerdy Mark channel. I'm Sid the Nerdy Mark and today I have your review of Raw and Smackdown for this week. Now you're probably wondering, Sid, why are you so late? Why are you putting this out? on the weekend well i've been taking care of some stuff in my personal life some of you may or may not know i am in the middle of a job search right now i've been working on some stuff working on trying to find my next career i'm trying to make my next career move i've been really into that so i didn't really get the time to sit down and record anything but i'm gonna see if i can't make this quick uh, i want to you know be able to still put this out for you guys so if you guys don't get the content like around the time in the weekday for this Raw Smackdown reviews. That's probably why because I was kind of focused on my on my job search because that is priority right now. YouTube is second uh, to my job search. So I hope you guys understand that. And also I do want to send out a really quick congratulations to Kane aka Glenn Jacobs and he is now the new mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, which is great because I used to live in Tennessee. It's good to see a fellow Tennessean do something big. So good luck, Kane, with everything. Hope you make some good decisions and benefit the people of Knox County. And that is as political as I will get on this channel. With that being said, let's dive right into this week's WWE television, starting with Monday Night Raw. So Raw does come to us from Miami, Florida, and it does start out with Roman Reigns, a Florida native, and he still gets a few boos in his own hometown. That is, that is very sad. He comes out, cuts a promo, a pretty decent promo on Brock Lesnar, talks about how at SummerSlam, he's going to take what is rightfully his, and that is the universal title, and he's going to kick Brock Lesnar's ass. He's going to make Brock Lesnar go back to the UFC as Roman Reigns' bitch. I don't know how exactly that works, Roman. Paul Heyman does take exception to this. He comes out, he says Brock Lesnar is in the building, but he will come out if he so chooses. We now go to our first match of the night, Constable Baron Corbin versus Finn Balor, a rematch from Extreme Rules, a match that we all really wanted to see. This was a pretty nothing match. I didn't really care much about it. Baron Corbin does hit the end of days onto Finn Balor and wins, so they're both 50-50. Uh, I'm smelling a rubber match at SummerSlam. Yay. We now had Alicia Fox versus Natalia in a very confusing match, actually. I don't know. I can't really put my finger on it, but it's just this whole ordeal was just like, what the hell is going on here? We did have Alexa Bliss in uh, Fox's corner and of course, Natalia's training partner and best friend, Ronda Rousey. This ended when there was something going on in the ring, which is kind of what confused me, I guess. And Ronda Rousey distracted the referee. Alexa Bliss uh, went to Natalia and attacked her because Natalia was in her corner. Alicia Fox takes advantage of this and she pins Natalia. This causes Ronda to get angry. She had to goes for Alicia Fox, but the heels look strong. We finally are getting our debut for Ronda Rousey. She's going to face off against Alexa Bliss next week on Raw. Up next, we did have Elias in the ring, and he is singing a song for the city of Miami, Florida. He runs down Miami, how it's a dirty place where they worship low lives like The Rock and he even calls out Bobby Lashley and everything. I was half expecting The Rock to come out, but <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Bobby Lashley does come out and he says, I heard you calling out my name, Elias. I came to hear you sing because I'm a big fan. Elias is like, no, I don't buy it. You came out here because you wanted to sing a song. Bobby Lashley says, I don't sing, I fight. Elias is like, no, I don't believe it. We want to hear you sing. No, we really don't, Elias. We have Bobby Lashley singing a really, really botched version of Red Robin. He fumbles on the lyrics and Elias, understandably so, attacks Bobby Lashley, but Bobby Lashley does get the better of Elias and beats him up. So it looks like we're getting Elias versus Bobby Lashley for SummerSlam. I don't get it, okay? He went from this horrible feud with Sami Zayn, then we transitioned into a really good feud between him and Roman, and now we're having Elias and Bobby singing nursery rhymes? What is going on with Bobby Lashley? Someone enlighten me, because I don't know what's going on. Bobby, can just go back to Impact because they actually treated you much better over there. We then had Braun Strowman versus Jinder Mahal, and 
This was also kind of a confusing match because it was really weird. So Jinder Mahal continues to do his whole meditation gimmick. Braun Strowman continues to say, get these hands. Kevin Owens comes out and steals Braun Strowman's briefcase. Braun Strowman runs out of the ring and goes towards, towards the back. And this has Jinder Mahal win in via countout. So I guess Braun still looks strong. So, you know, it's it's not too bad, but this really didn't make any sense for me. We then had Apollo Crews taking on Akam of the Authors of Pain. Why are we continuing to have this feud? This was a decent match, actually. I didn't really think the match itself was that bad because, you know, Apollo, who is very much like a hybrid athlete, he's like a powerhouse and he is can do the high flying stuff versus the strength and raw power of Akam. Um, so good match, good matchup right here, but it did end with Apollo winning. I mean, what are we doing with the AOP? Can we please pair them, pair them up with Roman Reigns? You have them contest for the Raw Tag Titles because they deserve much more than Titus Worldwide. We then had Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre in another really good match. I don't really think there's anything special that I want to talk about in this one, but the match did end when Seth Rollins hit the curb stomp onto Drew McIntyre and he was about to win, but Dolph Ziggler came in and attacked, so Seth won by disqualification. And Dolph tried to beat him up, but Seth did look strong in the end where he hit a suicide dive uh, onto Drew and Dolph and he is walking to the back and he of course does get a rematch for the IC title later on and is also jumped uh, by Dolphin Drew. This is going to be interesting. Uh, so we're getting another rematch for the IC title at SummerSlam. So there's that. Up next we did have the Raw Tag Team Champions, the B Team coming out and they're having an interview with Charlie Caruso when they're interrupted by the Deleters of Worlds where they basically say that they want to stake their claim for the titles. The Revival come out and they say, no, you guys are done. It's our turn, go to the back of the line. To which B-Team say, okay, we, we understand that you guys wanna talk. They kind of instigate a, a little fight between the B-Team and the Deleters. And this leads to a tag team match between the Deleters of Worlds and the Revival, which the Revival win. Good match, I enjoyed it. They hit the uh, Shatter Machine onto, uh, I think it was I think it was Matt. Um, so they win. And by the way, B Team were on commentary and they are gold on commentary. I want more co B Team commentary on my Monday Night Raw, please. That would be so awesome. Earlier on, we did have Mojo Rawley harassing the entire roster of WWE main event, including The Ascension, Mike Kanellis, and his former Hype Bros buddy, Zack Ryder. Bobby Roode stands up for the main event roster and he doesn't like what Mojo Rawley is doing. They have a little brawl. This leads to next week, where we're gonna have Mojo Rawley versus Bobby Roode, the exciting conclusion, and I don't care. Next up, we have the Riot Squad versus Sasha and Bailey, who are wearing matching outfits. They are now calling themselves the Boss and Hug Connection. Very original name, but it was a pretty good match. I liked it. Sasha and Bailey do win with a backstabber Bailey to Bailey combo, um, which looked really cool. I am smelling a women's tag team division coming up. So throughout the night, Paul Heyman was trying to convince Brock Lesnar to go outside into the ring, mainly because Kurt Angle gave him an ultimatum saying that if Brock Lesnar doesn't show up, Paul Heyman's contract is hereby terminated. So Paul did his best to try to bring Brock Lesnar out, but he was clearly engrossed in his outdoors magazines. So he was like, I am not coming out there. I don't care about the WWE. Honestly, this is the most Brock has ever spoken. It talks. Wow. I was, I never knew that. This was cool. I actually like this booking of Brock Lesnar, the Brock Lesnar that does not give a damn about the WWE. And it's not Brock Lesnar that does his best impression of John Cena. Too bad he's in the leg end of his WWE contract. I wish we saw more of this. We did have Brock Lesnar finally say that him and Paul Heyman are not friends and that he doesn't care about WWE at all as usual. So he says, get out there, do your job. So Paul Heyman comes out, tells Kurt Angle that uh, Brock is not coming out. Kurt Angle is about to fire him. Brock Lesnar comes out, gets on the mic and asks Kurt Angle if he has a problem with him and proceeds to F5. Kurt Angle, Constable Baron Corbin is watching all this and he leaves because he doesn't want any part of it. Smart move. Paul Heyman and Brock are smiling at each other. It looks like all their kind of dissension is gone, but no, he actually attacks Paul Heyman and he has basically become a one-man army, one 
man wrecking machine and like i said this is how i wanted to see brock lesnar this was perfect booking i loved it the uh storyline throughout the night was that brock didn't want to come out and this was great i loved this whole thing and i wish they did more like this throughout brock's wwe run smackdown live does come to us from tampa florida and it begins with becky lynch addressing her victory over carmella last week and now that she has an opportunity for the smackdown live women's title this brings out carmella she puts on this fake empathetic attitude she like starts crying and says you know no one likes me and everyone likes you and you know, you were the one always giving me advice in NXT and whatnot. Carmella tries to go for a handshake to Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch doesn't buy it. She is then distracted by James Ellsworth's theme music. Carmella hits a super kick onto Becky Lynch and starts beating her up. And then Charlotte returns. Charlotte Flair comes back and hits a move onto Carmella to save her best friend, Becky Lynch. Later on, Paycheck does book a match between Carmella and Charlotte. And if Charlotte wins, she's added into the SmackDown Live women's title picture. Why exactly, I don't know. I think it's time to give someone else a chance. I mean, I think honestly, Becky Lynch, she deserves it. And I love Charlotte to death. I think she's great. But at this point, we really don't need Charlotte as the champion right now. She's been champion already. Let her do something else. I don't know, form a tag team with Asuka and actually, you know, maybe do something of value there. We'll, we'll uh, talk about that a little bit later on down the line. Next up, we do have another first round match in the tag team tournament, the Usos versus the Bar. And we do have the New Day on commentary with their own commentary table. Tag teams doing commentary is always cool. You know, on Raw, we had B team doing commentary, which is great. The New Day obviously are always fantastic on commentary. So more tag team commentaries. This was a good match. I did enjoy this. Both guys, both tag teams are fantastic. But it did end when the Usos go for the double Us onto Sheamus, only for uh, Cesaro to come in and hit the uppercut on one of the Usos. And the other Uso tries to jump on Sheamus, but Sheamus gets the knees up, hits the roll up, one, two, three, the bar advance, and they're going to face the New Day next week. I am rooting for the bar. I am hashtag team bar all the way because i want them to be in the tag team title picture against the bludgeon brothers we now have my absolute favorite segment of the week samoa joe comes out in the ring and delivers a very personal message to aj styles explaining why he did what he did kind of he does mention that he has respect for aj styles and how he grinds and he works hard to keep that championship around his waist but at the same time he has not been a good family man and Samoa Joe says, don't worry, AJ. I will send you back home to your family, but the house that you built is gonna be mine and I'm gonna have the title around my waist. I honestly don't do justice to this. You should just go and seek out this promo because it is fantastic. Samoa Joe excels here on all accounts. So this was good stuff. I enjoyed it. I cannot wait for this match. Up next, we did have Jeff Hardy making his way into the ring. He comes out and he cuts an, an interesting promo on Randy Orton, basically calling him out. Randy Orton does come out and while he's fixated on Randy, Nakamura comes in from the back and attacks Jeff Hardy surprisingly does not hit a low blow except he just kicks him on the head. He's going for the Kinshasa but Randy stops him momentarily but then he allows him to hit one Kinshasa. Nakamura does exactly that. Then Randy Orton unleashes a vicious attack on Jeff Hardy getting him on the table and like ripping all his shirt off. I know what it sounds like but it's not like that. He then takes off the Hardy Boys logo that he that Jeff Hardy wears, he just rips it off of his neck and he says, I have stolen your identity now. This was great stuff. I do think we're getting closer and closer to either Brother Nero or Willow. That would be great, but you know who we really need from Jeff Hardy? We need Itchweed. We need Itchweed to come in and mow the hell out of Randy Orton's hair because he needs a damn haircut. We then had Zelina Vega taking on Lana win a pretty decent match. I did enjoy this. Andrade Cien Almas on the corner of Vega. Lana going at it alone. The match did end when Lana is about to win, but Aiden English comes in and he tries to help, but it backfires again. So Zelina Vega does get the victory. And backstage, we do have Aiden English trying to apologize to Lana, who at this point, her Russian 
accent is completely gone, except for when he when she says Rusev. I can't do it as well as her. But Rusev does yell at Aiden in English. Aiden gets out of there. Lana is mad at Rusev. She says, you know, I know you need your space and whatnot, but I really could have used your help out there. So more dissension in Rusev Day. Uh, it's going to be very, very sad when the inevitable happens. Up next, Daniel Bryan makes his way into the ring, wanting to address what happened last week when Miz threw the toy baby at him. So Daniel Bryan does want the Miz to come out and face him man to man because he is sick and tired of the Miz's antics and he wants a con wants competition. Miz, who is on the set of Miz and Mrs., uh, appears on the Titantron and basically wants to run down the entire success of his show, but Daniel Bryan's not having it because he doesn't care about his, quote, stupid show. He wants a match with Miz at SummerSlam. Miz does blatantly disagree and says that it's not gonna happen. And he says that Daniel Bryan is all washed up. He should let his contract expire at WWE and go back to the Indies, which is interesting because Daniel Bryan's contract does expire in September, just in time for All In. Daniel Bryan takes exception to this and calls Miz soft in the rings and in the ring and calls him a coward. And Miz retaliates by putting up a bunch of pictures of uh, crying babies with audios of the baby crying and says that Daniel Bryan is a crybaby and that's how the segment ends. This was good stuff, good promo work by both these men. I can't wait for their, their eventual match at SummerSlam, though I would keep it until WrestleMania 35. It is now time for our main event, Charlotte versus Carmella, and if Charlotte beats Carmella, she is added into the women's title picture at SummerSlam. And this is a very good match. I did like it. Charlotte obviously looking good. She keeps yelling that she's back throughout the match. We get it, Charlotte. We know you're back. You don't have to keep reminding us. It did end when Carmella was trying to hit the figure four onto Charlotte. Charlotte counters it into a figure four, transitions to a figure eight, and Carmella taps almost instantaneously. And now Charlotte is added into the triple threat. Meanwhile, Becky Lynch was watching all this in the back and she does look pretty angry. So it looks like we may be getting close to a Becky Lynch heel turn. So overall, I will say that Raw was a little bit better this week. However, it still did not hold a candle to SmackDown Live, which has been impressing me throughout for consecutive weeks on end. There was still some good stuff in Raw. I did like the whole narrative throughout the show with Brock Lesnar and how he doesn't care about the WWE Universe and how he just wants to basically sit in his locker room and read outdoorsman magazines all day, I guess, because, you know, that's, I guess, what he likes to do. I also did enjoy the Revival versus the Leaders of Worlds. That was a good match, especially with the B-Team on commentary. That was pure gold. Roman Reigns' promo in the beginning was actually pretty decent. Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins, uh, a really good match. As far as SmackDown is concerned, the match between... Uh, Carmella and Charlotte, the main event was good. Daniel Bryan and The Miz, great stuff there. Samoa Joe's promo was absolute gold. Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy, this feud continuing to build a lot of intrigue. I'm smelling a triple threat match between Randy Nakamura and Brother Nero. It did like Bar versus Usos. So that concludes my review of both Raw and SmackDown for this week. Let me know what you guys thought about both shows in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on social media and tell your friends about the Nerdy Mark. Until next time, this is Sid signing off. You guys take care. Bye-bye.